Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. This is Rina bringing you a new video. Today I'm going to make a review about this very interesting device called Turbox Neo. Now Turbox Neo, or just Turbox for short, is basically a console remote controller specially designed for illustration, graphic design, editing and the like. It basically works for any form of digital art uh, to make your workflow easier and faster. This is not a sponsored video, by the way. The guys at Torbox sent me one of these to just try it out and share my thoughts with all of you. So thank you Torbox so much for your kindness and for allowing me to make an honest review. Before we start though, make sure to subscribe to my channel and click on the bell to enable notifications so you don't miss out on any new videos. You can also support me on Patreon and get a lot more content from me every month with just a small donation. Ok, so first let me show you this device in a bit more detail. The controller came in this box which feels very sturdy and well protected. We've got the instructions, the cable, and the device itself inside of this bag. The controller has a matte finish, it's not shiny at all. And it's really soft, kinda like silicone? I don't know, but it's very pleasant to the touch, at least for me. It doesn't feel like cheap plastic at all, it seems to be very well built. There are 11 buttons in total, along with 3 clickable dials, all in different shapes. It even has some uh, rubber fit on the back, so it stays safely on your desk or whatever surface you put it on. And it can be used by left-handed artists too. Ain't that cool? <laughs> you can set all these different buttons with keyboard and mouse shortcuts. But in order to do that, you will need to download the drivers first. They're available for Windows and Mac. At first glance, it looks like it's going to be a nightmare to set this up, but worry not, it's actually super easy. Just press any button on the console and it will automatically light up on the drivers, as well as show you the placement here. Or hover over any of them with your mouse. Either way, you'll know exactly what you are editing thanks to the thumbnail. Click on that button you want to customize, and here you can choose any of the many default options. Or press the combination that you want on your keyboard or mouse clicks. You can also give them a name, so it's easier to find them later on on the list. For the different dials, you can set them to react slower with the slow option. For example, if you set one of them to change your brush size, you might want to enable the slow option so the brush won't increase or decrease dramatically every time you use it. On the contrary, maybe you will want to disable it for the zoom in and out shortcuts. That depends on you. There are some very interesting options for the other keys as well. You can enable the RPT one so that the button keeps reacting to the shortcut as long as you are pressing it. Or to react only to the command once you release the button. The first option is very useful for me. I set the D-pad so that I can move layers around in the specific direction. Enabling the RPT option means I can just press once and the shortcut will remain active until I lift my finger from it. Even though 11 buttons and 3 dials may sound restrictive at first, you can add up to 47 shortcuts, I think. How? Well, you can combine some of these keys together, that's how. For example, 
I have this one set as the control key and this one set as the shift key but when I combine them it turns into control T an option I use quite a lot while drawing if you click on the double arrows on the list you will find all the possible combinations Toolbox comes ready to be used on Photoshop, Lightroom and Premiere as you can see on the top left corner but if you use neither of those, like me <laughs> You can just make a new set here and customize every button to your liking. Or, even better, go to their website and download a preset for your favorite program, if it's available, of course. They've got presets for a lot of software, including Sai and Clip Studio. <laughs> wow, I'm impressed! To import any profiles, just download them Click on Import Preset, find the file, and give it a name. Then you can adjust some of the buttons to fit your workflow. That's what I did to save time when I first tried this device. You can have presets for several programs and click on this button so it changes automatically whenever you switch from one software to the other. Then click where it says No Link to link it to that specific program, which, by the way, should be open so it appears on this list. You're now ready to go and work as you usually do, but using Toolbox instead of your keyboard or tablet's buttons. I can't really show you how I use this, I mean, I don't think a video of just my head pressing on all these buttons would be entertaining to look at for several minutes. <laughs> So just have a bit of a time lapse of something I've been working on these days while I tell you more about my experience with this controller. Honestly, the first time I saw Turbox, I didn't particularly like it. <laughs> like, I haven't seen many devices of this type, but the few I've seen were all very keyboard-like, you know, they all have this super slick, elegant look, almost alien-like technology, <laughs> while Toolbox looks more like someone just threw a bunch of random buttons on top of a black blob. <laughs> I was very skeptical that this could ever work for me or be comfortable to use at all, but I was very wrong. I've been using it for the past two, three weeks, and I gotta say, I like it a lot. I have a very small desk, and whenever I draw on my Cintiq, the keyboard has to be placed behind it, which makes it difficult and awkward to reach some of the keys sometimes. I have been considering buying a remote of some sort for a long while, but they either didn't seem to have enough buttons for what I needed, or some only worked on specific softwares, or were difficult to set up or work properly. And you know what? I'm glad I didn't buy any of them in the past, because this is probably the only one that could ever work for me. Like I said earlier, Turbox looks very weird at first, the buttons, their shapes, the placement of everything, it doesn't seem to hold any logic. But it's that asymmetry what makes this product different than the others. As the buttons are all different sizes and shape, it is very easy to identify them just by touch. I don't have to look at it while I'm using it, which is good because then I can focus solely on what I'm doing on the screen. It takes a bit of time to get used to it and develop some muscle memory though. Uh, you also have to experiment to find the perfect placement for all your shortcuts. I'm still making small adjustments to my settings. But overall, I don't think it's too difficult to get used to it. I mean, surely not more than other controllers whose buttons are all identical. So yeah, I'm very happy with this product and I will definitely keep using it. Its size is small enough to fit on my desk right next to my tablet, but big enough that I can rest my hand on it comfortably. It kinda reminds me of a game controller. Maybe a tiny bit bigger would feel even better? I don't know, I'm just trying to think about possible downsides for my big-handed comrades, but 
I guess it also depends a lot on every person. It's quite heavy though. I mean, it's designed to be placed on top of a table or something. Uh, you're not supposed to hold it in your hand up in the air. It can be portable in the sense that it can most likely fit any transport bag, but you may not want to carry it around because of the weight. The USB cable it comes with isn't exactly short, but it's not extra long either. For my case, it's just the right length, but I guess for some people it might be too short, or maybe they just don't want to have to deal with cables at all. A wireless version would be a nice addition in the future. All the buttons are mouse-like clicks with minimal trouble. You don't have to press much to activate them, which was a very nice surprise. They are actually a lot more quiet than my mouse. I think the knob, dial and wheel might feel a bit loose sometimes, or to some users at the very least. It would be nice if Turbox eventually upgraded the product in a way that we could also customize the sensitivity of the dials. I find the bottom left one a bit too loose for my taste. I sometimes activate it by accident while I'm reaching for other buttons, but overall it's not too bad. And um, I think that would be it. I don't know where else to talk about. Oi, Lina! Hmm? You forgot to talk about something very important. Oh, uh, what? Oh, yeah! That! <laughs> How could I forget? As of today, the Turbox Neo console can be bought through the official website for $169 about 140 euros, I think. Yeah, not gonna lie, your wallet is probably going to notice it, but I think it's worth the investment. If you're a digital artist, you most likely have already purchased a tablet, a computer, a good monitor, good mouse, drawing or editing program. So once you add those $169 to the mix, I don't think it makes a big difference. <laughs> sure, there are some cheaper alternatives, like the Wacom Express Key Remote, the Clip Studio Tap Mate, the XP Pen Shortcut Remote, but they all have their downsides. The Wacom Express Key Remote is supposed to be used only on Wacom products. Although from what I've heard, it can work with other tablet brands if you're patient enough to play around with the drivers. Some people have also reported the touch ring to not work properly, and most of the buttons look exactly the same. The Tab Mate can only be used on Clip Studio Paint, no other programs. And it is battery powered. Ugh. And the XP Pen Remote, well, it's literally just a tiny keyboard with a dial. There are many others in the market, but from what I have seen, they all seem to share some of these cons. Toolbox, on the contrary, can be used on any program. All its buttons are very responsive, and it's super easy to tell them apart just by touch. You can make lots of combinations with a device that fits in your palm. It's sturdy and very well made, and it doesn't require batteries. I would totally recommend this remote over the others. I know it's more expensive, but I'd say the overall experience is better too. It takes a bit of time to get used to it, but I personally find it makes my working process a lot more comfortable now, as I don't have to awkwardly and blindly reach behind my tablet anymore, and I no longer hit the wrong keyboard combination with this device. So that was my honest opinion about the Turbox Neo console. If you also think this could be the perfect device for you, I have a coupon code you can use on their website to get a small discount. Just click on the referral link you'll find in the description and input the code during your purchase. I'm not sure if the coupon expires after some days, by the way. I hope this review was useful for you guys. Remember to leave a like, comment and share, as well as subscribing to my channel if you've enjoyed this video.
And if you have any doubts, feel free to leave them in the comment section, or you can also reach out to Tourbox. By the way, you can watch all my content weeks before I post it publicly if you support me on Patreon. You'll get access to sketches, high-res files, layered files, and more stuff, along with, you know, the gratification that you're helping someone. <laughs> Time to say goodbye for today. I hope to see you in the next video too. Take care. Mwah!